Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel, Pinoy Adulting 101. My name is Richie, and for today's video, we will be discussing about prior authorization. So are you guys ready? Go ahead and prepare your pen and paper, and we will start. So, what is prior authorization? Prior authorization is a process or a cost-effective process set up by insurance companies requiring providers and other healthcare professionals to submit or obtain a pre-approval before um, a specific service, procedure, um, device, or medication is delivered to the patient to ensure that that um, service or procedure is covered or going to be covered uh, by that insurance. So we submit prior authorization and try to obtain approval from their insurance companies so that we or our providers will get paid for that uh, services rendered or device that was delivered or medication that was sent to the patient will be covered by the insurance company. Okay, if, um, by the way, not all prior authorization gets approved, but um, we submit an appeal if it gets denied, okay? We submit an appeal and provide additional medical information, a medical documentation to the insurance company to prove that it is medically necessary. All right. So how long does it usually take for prior authorization to get, to get approved or to get a result from the insurance company? So some may take a day, though it rarely happens. Um, usually it takes two to four weeks to get a result for that prior authorization request from the insurance company. So just to be on the safe side, give at least a month to get the result from the insurance company. Also, make sure to follow up with them. Um, call them, fax them, um, and um, check availability every once in a while to see if there's any status update for that insurance um, prior authorization, okay? Now, if you're wondering what are the services, procedures, devices that requires prior authorization, so I'll give a few examples, but this is not all of it. You still need to check with the insurance company if they will um, uh, require a prior, authorization, uh, prior authorization for that specific procedure or uh, you know device um, or whatever that you are planning to prescribe or give to the patient. Okay, so examples are uh, number one, uh, radiology services so MRI CT scans echocardiogram and then after radiology services laboratories like genetic testing what else um, oxygen uh, DMEs okay um, if you're not um, familiar with DMEs these are durable medical um, equipments durable medical equipments DMEs also requiring prior authorizations are orthotics and prosth uh, prosthetics, okay? And hearing aids or um, audio and visual services. Um, what else? Ambulatory um, services like wheelchair, surgical services, um, surgeries, procedures, um, surgeries like that. What else? Um, let me just check here. Occupational therapy, okay, and other, but the most common would be radiology services, um, expensive medications, um, expensive laboratories. So those are usually requiring prior authorization. If you're not sure, it is a rule of thumb to call the insurance company ahead of time to check if a certain procedure, device, or medication requires prior authorization. You can do that upon um, doing the insurance verification. So insurance verification is different from prior authorization because insurance verification is checking the patient's insurance benefits and eligibility. What are the things that their insurance company will cover? Now, for prior authorization, that's something else, okay? Um, 
it is getting an approval before rendering a specific service, before delivering um, devices, medications, things like that. So that's the difference. Okay. If you're wondering where you can submit prior authorization, I can give you a few. Okay, so the first one would be through Availity. It is a portal where you can submit prior authorization to different insurances like Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, Aetna, Ambetter, okay, and other um, major insurances. Okay, next would be calling the insurance company. Um, you can get the phone number for prior authorization at the back of the insurance card. Usually it's there. So it is best to get a copy, an image copy of the patient's in insurance card, front and back image, and save it on their chart, okay? And then when you need to submit a prior authorization, you can check their insurance card on file and get the number and call that number. And then also you can fax a prior authorization request to the insurance company. You just have to get their um, form because insurance companies has specific forms for prior authorization so you have to have that and then fax it over together with the medical records that they require and then the last on my list would be the prior authorization portal that is specific to that insurance company for example Aetna. Aetna has their own prior authorization portal you have to create your login credentials and submit prior authorization there. Okay. By the way, for medications, if you need to submit prior authorization for medications, you can also do it via Cover My Med. It's also a portal where we submit prior authorization for prescriptions and medications. Okay. So, what are the information that you need to submit a prior authorization? So I have categor categorized it into three parts. So the first part would be patient information. The second part will be the doctor's information. And the third part is the procedure or device information. Okay, so um, on the first part, which is the patient information, you need to have the complete name of the patient, their date of birth, their insurance member ID, and if they're not the primary subscriber, then you have to have the primary subscriber's information. So, complete name and date of birth, okay? And then, for the second part, which is the doctor's information, you need to have the doctor's complete name, the doctor's specialization, the doctor's NPI number, the doctor's tax ID number, the doctor's um, contact information, so their office address and telephone number and fax number, okay? And um, you have to know where the procedure um, will take place. Is it in office or is it out of office? I mean, is it inpatient, sorry, is it inpatient or um, outpatient? So inpatient meaning hospital and outpatient meaning um, office clinic. Okay, so um, you need to uh, provide that information. And then the third part would be the procedure information. So you need to know what type of procedure or device you're submitting prior authorization for. So you need a CPT code for that ready. Okay, CPT code. And then you also need to have the diagnosis code, which is ICD-10 code. You need to prepare that Um and you need to give that to the representative or you have to put it on the system. So the CPT code is very important as well as the diagnosis code. Now, if there's already a schedule for the procedure, then you also have to provide that. If not, then ask for like a duration for the validity of the prior authorization. For example, if it gets approved, um, can it get a month or up to three months validity? as well as you need to write down or give the number of units for that uh, certain procedure or CPT code. So how many units do you need? One unit? Two units? How many? How many units? Okay. 
And then, um, yep, you know, you need to provide if it's going to be in the hospital or out of uh, outpatient services. Okay. And um, so that's it. If you have questions regarding prior authorization, don't forget to comment it down below and I'll look into it. Maybe I can create another content regarding um, regarding prior authorization if um, if you'd like to learn more about you know prior authorization. And if you would like to suggest other content subjects that we can discuss, just comment it down there as well. For those people who haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, please um, subscribe, click the bell button so you'll be notified if ever I upload new videos. And please like this video if you learn something new. And um, please share it with other people that, that might um, benefit from watching this video. So thank you so much for reaching this end, I mean, reaching the end of this video. And I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!